Coming up today, we've got a lot of great looking trucks in the TCI class from the Masters Ultimate Auto Expo in Knoxville, Tennessee, next on The World of Trucks. Today on World of Trucks from the Masters Ultimate Auto Expo, presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. From Chill Howie Park in Knoxville, Tennessee, welcome everyone, I'm Claude Wood. And the TCI truck class today, yellow really stands out, and I have found a gorgeous 1966 Chevy Stepside. Belongs to Pete Walker. Now Pete, this truck has been, let's just say, highly modified. From one end to the other, just about it. it. That truck took about five years to build it, and I've had it together about 10 years. A little bit of everything has been done on the truck. Those are some pretty big tires on the back. Well, I've done those tires back years ago before there was a 9-inch Ford rear end, and that is a Chevrolet rear end cut down with Chrysler axles and Chrysler end plates. And the fenders have been extended four inches to make room for it. The frame's not been noshed or anything. That was the old style of doing that. And I notice a lot of modifications to the sheet metal. Didn't look that way in 1966. Did you do that? Uh, me, my friend, I hired some of it done. The top's been chopped down four inches, been laid back. The windshield's been laid back six inches. Uh, the bed has a metal bed out of a late model. I took the wood floor out, cut a metal bed down, and put that in there. Uh, the hood, the hood's a metal hood with a scoop on it. Uh, everything underneath the hood is finished, you know, the bottom part of the hood. Uh, the engine is 327. It's the old original block that was in the truck when I got the block. That's a neat dashboard, too. Well, the dashboard, everybody wants to know where I bought that at. I didn't buy that. I took it and had it made. A lot of the things on this truck, I've set and brought them out on a template, out of cardboard, and then start with metal and start making it. Uh, the tail lights, everybody wants to know where the tail lights came from. They're homemade also with the original Chevrolet lens in the tail lights. So. Seats look real comfy. Uh, what did they come from? Seats are out of an older model van and a steering column, tilt steering column also is out of an older model van. The console in it, it's out of a late model pickup truck. All the front suspension on this truck, too, is 78 model with disc brakes. I noticed you put a big tack right there on the dash. You want to keep an eye on that uh, small block, don't you? Well, I like to hear a small block scream, and it'll get up there and scream. So I've got it set on about 6,800, and it has no problem at all getting up there at 6,800. So it's screaming then. So you're telling me when you're out here on Interstate 40 or somewhere, you can hear it scream. I can hear it scream. I love to hear it scream. <laughs> all right, there you go. Pete, thanks a lot for bringing it out. Hey, a gorgeous truck. You want to see some more? You've tuned into the right place. We have them right here on World of Trucks. You know, people spend hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, you know, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars to restore their trucks. They want them to look clean, pristine, pure, perfect. But rat rods are making the comeback, and the thing now is to leave it as it was, all natural. And Kevin, you got to step on up in here. There's a, a great story behind this. It's actually Frankenstein together. Now, first of all, tell me where the, the chassis came from, because that's actually what the whole thing sits on. It's a 1950 Ford car chassis that's been shortened. Uh, the truck cab is a 1935 Ford. It's been channeled over it with a 35 grill shell and a, a 46 model Ford truck bed that was actually made out of an old trailer that I've gotten and made and put on it. And did I see a weld mark in that truck bed? Yes, yes. I, I, I cut the truck bed right down the center and then put it back together and tried to make it look like it, you know, it was old and aged it and uh, actually rubbed dirt and rusty metal in it to uh, get the proper look. <laughs> The, the look definitely is great. This gets a lot of attention and catches a lot of eyes. And, of course, red stands out, and that speaks to the Flathead Mercury. Tell me about that. Yeah, it's a 40 over 53 model Flathead Mercury, painted hot rod red, match the wheels, traditional 50s look. Uh, it's, it's got mostly a stock cam, and it's 40 over. Like I said, in a, it's got the vintage speed double carburetor set up, which is a little unusual with the adapter. But uh, And the grill, where did that come from? Actually, I bought that grill off of eBay and had to make it look old on purpose. Uh, it was red and I sandblasted it and uh, treated it with salt water and uh, rubbed some paint in it to get it to match the cab. So everything on the truck's made to look old. I'll tell you, you know, it's quite a craft here and maybe that's going to be a business that opens up for you. Maybe I'm giving you an idea to take new parts and make them look old. Even the paint, you made that look authentic. Yes, the, uh, the truck cab itself is from Kansas, and the, the cab and the doors, they, they pretty much had that look on them, but the, the, I had to hunt down the bed and the grill shell and, and make them match the cab, so finding rusty taillights is not an easy thing to do, mirrors, things that would match, 
Yeah. You really have to hunt. hunt. All right. If, if I gotta if I gotta give you one piece of advice, you might want to go out and get a taller shifter, man. I mean, right. wow. <laughs> yeah, I'd always wanted a rat fink style shifter. You see the the old T-shirts, you know, that the the tall shifter. So uh, yeah, I had to do it on this one. All righty then. No. no what what gets the greatest compliments? What do people talk about the most with this? Well, most people really like the flathead engine. You start it up, you can barely hear it run. You drive around the show, you can sneak up behind people that don't even realize it's coming. Uh, the uh, oil, the church key oil can opener was out of my grandfather's toolbox. They want to know what that's for, hanging on the truck, and uh, the double carburetor set up. It's just it's people it's stuff people don't see anymore, and uh, it really they like it. All right, it's a job well done. Let me ask you to take a step back, and what I want you to do is come and look in the passenger side. Take a look in here. The, the look of the clean, finished days that are gone, man, it's raw. It's a rat rod, and it is the way that we like our trucks these days. Awesome stuff. World of Trucks is being brought to you by Stainless Steel Brakes. Performance Brakes built right by Stainless Steel Brakes. And by Lund. Get the look. Welcome back to the World of Trucks from the Masters Ultimate Auto Expo presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now, here's Bill Stevens. These trucks, such size, such power like this one right here. Take a look at it closely. Look at this big brush bar in the front, seemingly there to push life out of the way for wherever this driver wants to go. And the wheels, big, aggressive tires and heavy-duty suspensions that can literally drive over anything anything at all that gets in the way of this driver who knows where he's headed in life. And look at the mural on the side. I mean, you can almost picture that somewhere in those woods there are hunters with their rifles standing by waiting for their quarry to come into their sights. The trucks that we see at events like this are huge. They're sizable. They have power. They have bearing. So it's not hard to imagine that the driver of this truck plays golf. You know, a lot of us have trucks. We either use them to drive because we love them or we use them as tow vehicles. And a lot of them are diesels. And the crazy thing is, diesel used to be cheaper than regular gas, but not anymore, so you gotta watch it. A lot of products on the market will help you improve horsepower, torque, performance, and mileage. But how do you really know you're getting the benefit? Well, the dynamometer is the answer. And if you've never seen one, you've been at a show probably where they're there, you definitely got to take them up on the offer because it's definitely worth it. For only 35 bucks, you get two pulls here to see maybe a baseline of where your horsepower and torque curves are. And then what you can do, you can go and add an aftermarket product, come back a little bit later, and measure your gains. The dynamometer, the mobile ones are awesome stuff here. Now these are transported from event to event. It's an eddy current dynamometer. Some work with water, some work with other methods, but basically there's a big motor here that has no power. Well, when you run the engine, rather the motor, with the power delivered by the drive wheels of your vehicle, well then power is fed in. Just enough to resist, to get a little resistance behind the drive line, and then you can actually measure and calculate exactly how much horsepower and torque you got. Now, torque is the magic thing with diesels. Remember, big pistons, short stroke, and that's what you need for pulling power. So what I want to do here, why don't we fire this big bad boy up, this 99 Ford here, and then why don't we just see exactly how much power it's got. All right, Scott Mansfield from Sudden Performance just finished up run number one. Okay, so the printer is going to give us a readout of exactly what we saw. Now, on the bottom graph here, we're going to see the miles per hour, and then the green line up on top, that's going to be the torque. Remember, the diesels make more torque than horsepower. The blue line represents horsepower. So here are our maximum numbers. The horsepower, 269.1, that happened at 70 miles an hour, and then the maximum torque was 763.7 foot-pounds of torque, that happened at 58 miles an hour. So now we know the baseline, now we know where we stand. Let's go ahead and make a couple of software changes with a little black box magic, and then we'll see where we are. All right, last time a whole lot of smoke, Scott. That's not what really matters. What matters is the power. Before we get into the numbers here, how popular is it for people to come on by and get their trucks run on the dyno? Uh, everybody wants to see what they improve if, every time they do an upgrade on their motor or the diesel truck and all their old cars, muscle cars and everything like that. They want to see what they gain from doing rear end changes, transmissions, to cam change, uh, anything that you can add to a car to soup it up. 
All right, awesome stuff. And we uh, made some software changes here. This is our first graph. Let's go ahead and stack it up. What do we got, Scott? We have here on the first run, we had 269.1 at 70 miles per hour. On, on the second run, we got 281.7 of 12 horsepower gain at a faster speed at 50 miles per hour. That's so in other words, we gained 12 horsepower. It, again, horsepower, not a big deal for a diesel, but we got it 20 miles per hour faster at a more reasonable cruising speed. Exactly. Uh, also, you can see on this graph versus this graph, it's a whole lot smoother. Uh, the torque on the second graph uh, was 960 at 47 miles per hour versus 763 at 58 miles per hour on the first after we installed the Evolution. Uh, edge evolution product on there it made it a whole lot smoother versus this right here I'll tell you you know what this happens at a more reasonable usable speed not a lot of time not a lot of money not a lot of effort big benefit and you know what if you see the mobile dyno get in line because this is one hot tool stay with us when we come back more great looking trucks from Knoxville Welcome back to the World of Trucks, the TCI truck class from the Masters Ultimate Auto Expo in Knoxville. Now, here's Jack Corpella. Well, we found one of the true contenders from last year. Yes, again, this bright teal 56 Ford F100 is going to be one of the competitive trucks here this weekend. You can see the beautiful paint just reaches out and grabs you. And we'll talk to the owner over here once again, Julia. You know, it's been a year since we've talked to you, but uh, the truck is still looking like it's one of the players out here. Well, thank you. We've won a, several awards with it this year. And I've, uh, I've noticed that uh, the truck certainly isn't any sloppier. It's still very spotless. You're definitely putting your work and hours in on the, uh, on the buffing. We do. <laughs> we work on the, on the car together. I see we do. Bob, your husband here, it's a husband and wife team, though. Right. Who, who does most of the maintenance? Uh, we both work on it together. Okay, smart answer, smart answer. Yeah. <laughs> I do the hauling and she does the work. All right, let's talk a little bit more about the truck. The thing that I like is you got the bright teal paint, and then looking in the motor, you got the engine block also powder coated bright teal, the power steering pump bright teal, the brake components bright teal. You guys really took a, a, a catching color and ran with it. Yes, we did. We really liked the color, and we wanted everything to be either powder coated, chrome, or the teal. So that's why you see so much teal. Bob, let's talk a little bit about the, the motor. I see you got a, a beefy aluminum V8 in there. What kind of horsepower are we putting out? Oh, this one's probably around 250 horsepower. It's, it's basically a stock engine, 351. 351, what kind of transmission do we have in there? It's a C6 automatic. Now here comes the big question, who gets to drive the truck more? She drives it. I do. She drives it. <laughs> lucky, lucky woman. I guess that's why it's hers. It's her truck. So let me ask you, how is the drive? Does it, is it drive like an older truck or is it uh, very comfortable? It's comfortable, you know, everything seems like it's, it works functionally well. You, we have the air ride system, you, you put it up and, and uh, drive it and then you let it down and show it. So it works out real good. What's your favorite part about this truck? The color um, and the fact that it's neat, clean, I like that. How did you pick this color, if I may ask? We actually bought the truck and it was this color to begin with. And that was the reason that we, we chose it, was because of the color. Um, a local dentist had the truck before and had stopped work on it. So we just picked it up and went with it and um, made it into more of a truck than he was going to. It was going to be, you know, a driver and a just everyday truck. So we kind of beefed up everything and, and fixed it the way that, you know, we wanted to. And how about that gorgeous interior? Oh, that's awesome. The color um, of the interior was selected because of the, the coolness of the, um, the leather. It's, it's tan leather and um, all chrome in there, so we really like it. You know, it doesn't matter what the truck is. We all take them very, very seriously. Some of us do it for business. We're hardcore about it. Everything's got to be right. Others, well, they do it for fun. But I'll tell you one thing, ain't no monkeying around here, as we got a beautiful 48 Chevy Stepside. And David, first of all, welcome to Knoxville here. And beautiful machine. The most striking thing about it is what I thought was Granitelli orange walking up, but no, it's Mandarin orange. Right. It's Mandarin orange. And then how did that color choice happen? Well, that's the color bar. Uh, my boss picked out when he, he decided to build his truck. That's what color they decided to put on it. 
All right, now that's the color for a lumber company that yeah. your boss owns and your boss owns the truck. Yeah. Now, how did you get stuck coming out here in the heat to show the truck? Well, he built it specially for me to have fun because he know I'd take care of it. Because I'm the only one who gets up and cleans and polishes up underneath of it. All right, that's awesome stuff. What a great gift. Now, the power plant here, I'm telling you, that was not stock. Tell me about it. It's a 454 racing motor. Did it fit in there easily, or were there a lot of modifications that had to go on? I didn't have no problem getting it in. All right, wow, awesome stuff. And then uh, am I looking at air conditioning added after the fact? Yeah, it was put on when they put the motor in. All right, got to have the creature comforts. Come on, let's go inside. And by the way, you know what? You got monkeys all over the place. What's up with this here? How come? I'm just crazy about monkeys. <laughs> Any particular reason? No, I just always have like monkeys. All righty. Well, you know, some people say that about some TV personalities sometimes, but we won't griff any names. But on the inside here, the color is carried in. The dash is molded up very, very nicely. Who did all that work? Profab. All right. And was it to their design or did uh, your I boss? the sign of the whole truck. He told them how he built it, and they built it in six months. Wow. And the, uh, the seating here, where did that come from? It come out of a Ford truck. It, they, they recovered. They got upholstery people there, too. It done the whole thing. All right. You know the crossbreeding happens all the time, putting Ford parts into a Chevy and vice versa. The bed here is really, say it again? It's got a Ford rear end, a Mustang too, front end. Nine inch? Yes. All right. I put that pole's pretty nice there. Yeah, that's the best front end you can have in a truck like this, a Mustang too. Yeah. And then uh, back here, I was looking at the bed. Very, very nice. It's well protected, does not show any signs of weather. Uh, it's oak. They put about six coats of stuff on it. And then how much time, you mentioned you're the one that actually puts the elbow grease to it and keeps it clean. How much time do you spend? Mostly about a, a day to do it. A whole entire day. All right. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, no monkeying around here. This one definitely tight, clean, and right. Stay with us here on the World of Trucks. More great-looking trucks coming your way. World of Trucks is being brought to you by Jet Rack, the world's best sliding rail ladder racking system, and by Real Wheel, made in America by Americans for the World Wide Road. Feast your eyes on the 05 F-250. No, up here. I'm up here. Yeah, yeah. All it takes is a lift kit, tires, and wheels to get this big 250 11 inches up in the ground. Phil, you have got this thing sitting high as a roller coaster. Yeah, it's pretty big for sure. What do, what do you, what do you, what's it like to drive this truck when it's that high up in the air? Oh, it's not that bad. It drives like it, like it did stock. It's just a little bit bigger. Why the, why the choice? Most guys lower them. Why the choice to bring it up? Well, I've built five lowered trucks. I figured it was time to build a big one. So. How difficult it was it converting the wheels and the, the lift kit? Oh, it wasn't that bad. It took us about eight hours to put the lift kit on, uh, mount the tires and everything, put it all together. So. Wasn't terrible. And when people walk by at the car show and they see this unique look, what do, what do they say? This is the first show we've been to, so I don't <laughs> so, really know, honestly. So you don't really know. What's your impression so far? Everybody seems to like it. They look at it hard, so I guess they like it. How much fun is it to drive around the street and show off? Oh, I love it, man. That's what it's for, so, you know, I love to drive it. And I know it's spotless. You must put a lot of time in cleaning. Yeah, we clean it. I don't drive it but about once a week, so, you know, it gets cleaned about once a week, so. Now, despite how clean it is, are you ever tempted to take it out in the swamp or out in the, uh, the dirt and do a little racing? No, no, no. <laughs> well, you say that now, maybe after you have it for a little while. So, uh, finally, I want to ask you, what, what are you most proud of on this truck? Uh, I guess that we got it all done. You know, it took forever to find, find the wheels and tires that we wanted, so I'm just happy we got it all done. Well, all it took was wheels, tires, and a lift kit, and it's one of the highest outstanding vehicles here at the O'Reilly Masters Ultimate Auto Expo. It's time now for Product Highlight, featuring some of the most innovative and interesting aftermarket products available for your truck. I am with Tony Monda. He's the marketing director for Hallmark Industries. Last time we saw Tony, he gave us a tour of a custom motor home and the Pro Stacker combination trailers that Hallmark manufactures. And what's new at Hallmark these days, Tony? Bill, thanks for asking. Amazing, isn't it? It's absolutely <laughs> amazing. This is the latest creation from the product development team at Hallmark. We call it our premiere. It's designed for the discriminating car buyer who's looking for a trailer that's a cut above the traditional uh, steel frame aluminum skin trailers. Tony, what's different about this line of trailer? 
Actually, it's an FRP smooth-sided design, and it's the perfect complement for that special car truck. You know, our customers spend tens of thousands of dollars on their vehicles, and finally, they can have a trailer that's as unique as their custom car or truck. Can we take a look inside? You bet. All right, let's go. All right, the first thing that really impresses me about the inside of this trailer is how well organized and sanitary it is. Yeah. It's got a bright, clean interior. The first thing you'll notice is these are SeaTech cabinets, high-end premium cabinets, an option with this trailer. And we've mounted fluorescent lighting above the work area for a bright environment for that detail repair job. If you look at the sides, again, they're seamless, they're rivetless, they're clean. And as you walk back to the ramp door, you'll see it's a full 95 inches wide. And as you lay the ramp door down, the hinge cover automatically engages. Finally, the rear ramp extension is designed to open totally flush, Bill, so there's no bump when you load and unload a truck, car. Trailer buyers are always concerned about the durability of the trailers. What's the construction like on this trailer? Uh, beauty is not just skin deep at Hallmark. This is a rock solid design. We built this trailer on a six inch tube frame with cross members on 16 inch centers. We assemble it with huck fasteners those are the strongest fasteners available and covered up with stainless steel trim. Finally, all the Premier trailers come standard with alcohol aluminum wheels, Goodyear tires, LED clearance and tail lighting, and an electric tongue jack. Well, I got to admit it, as a car collector myself, I am lusting for one of these products, and I can really say that you're going to sell a million of these. Thanks, and that's why we say Hallmark, built strong for the way you work and play. It says it all. Well, that puts a wrap on this edition of World of Trucks from the Masters Ultimate Auto Expo presented by O'Reilly Auto Parts from Knoxville, Tennessee. Now for Jack Corpella and Bill Stevens and Griff Allen, Claude Wood, keep on trucking. For more information on products featured today, log on to these websites. Be sure to join us next week on World of Trucks for Class 4 Mud Drags from Bloomsburg, Indiana.